Well, hi there, and welcome back to my sewing room. And today I wanna to talk to you about foundation paper piecing. But I've been doing a little bit of it, and it's super fun. I don't wanna make all of my blocks this way, but let me tell you, foundation paper piecing really lends itself to certain blocks. And so I'll be talking about that um, through this video. But what I've been working on is the Best Friends Quilt Along. And I've been doing this with Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop. And it's really been fun. Next week, we're going to be showing how to put the blocks together. Now, what I'm doing is making half of the quilt, and she's making the other half. And then I'm going to send my blocks to her. You saw my blocks on my design wall here in the opening. And I'm going to send those to her, and she's going to put them together. And um, then we're going to auction it off for charity for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And so I'm pretty excited about that. So um, before I talk to you about the blocks, let me, let me push these out of the way for a minute. And I wanted to talk to you about something that Kimberly sent to me. This is the backing fabric for that quilt. So this is one of my B backgrounds. Let's see, and Kimberly likes to piece her backs typically and she uses like leftover blocks and puts labels in. So look how cute that is. So she's used different pieces of my B backgrounds. And then she's put in some leftover courthouse steps blocks from the foundation paper. And um, then she does labels by Sweetwater that she has them printed and so with already her name on it. And then somehow she always, you know, pieces the label into the back. So what I'm gonna be doing, she sent me the back of the quilt so that I can add my label. And so what I'm gonna be doing, I don't know which ones yet, but I have this whole bolt here that I have designed, oh, you know, a couple years ago, last year with my Happy Place collection. And see all these different labels it has where you can write different things or embroider different things. So I'm going to choose one of these labels and then I'll just cut it out, write my information on here, sign my name and the name of the quilt or whatever. And then I'll go ahead and applique it on the back of the quilt, probably, you know, in one of these spots or something or down here. Let's see, let me move that so you can see it. Or down here by Kimberly's name or something. And then I think Kimberly said that she was gonna sign her name too. I know this is her printed name, but I'm gonna sign my name and then she's gonna sign her name too. And, and uh, so we'll have that signed and ready to go for the auction. So after this video, I'm gonna go ahead, take that sis, I'm gonna go ahead and send this backing back to her and my blocks with the paper still on it so they don't get distorted or stretched out at, you know, during shipping. And then she's gonna go ahead and put it together. So, so what we did was we decided to do this quilt along using my B Basics fabric and for all of the prints and my B backgrounds for all of the backgrounds. And we came up with this quilt along because you know, Kimberly and I are best friends. We're really good friends. We have been for quite a while and we love sewing things together and we thought it would be really fun for you guys to be able to do that as well. All of the information for this is on uh, the Fat Quarter Shop blog, which is called Jolly Jabber, and I will link to that. So in case you are not participating in this and you'd like to, then um, there's a link in the drop down menu of this video description. And so what we decided to do was use the foundation papers. Um, this is one. These are all put out by It's So Emma. This is one that I happen to do, the economy block. So some of the blocks are this economy. This is the six inch size. Both of, all of these blocks, um, the foundation papers come in 12 inch or six inch. So we decided to work with the six inch size for this. But if you wanna make your quilt twice as big as ours, then you can use the 12 inch size and all that information is on her blog post as well. So we've used economy blocks and this is the print off for that page. It tells you how many you need to make. 
you know, for the quilt. It says to make eight, but I only needed to make four because I'm only making half the blocks for the quilt. And then another one we're doing is pineapple. Courthouse steps and the log cabin. Now again, these are all in a six inch size, but they come in 12 inch size as well. So today, what I wanted to show you was um, about my economy blocks. So I'm gonna move these papers out of the way. And I just, you know me, I love someone scrappy. And so I thought I would show you how to make a scrappy economy block using this paper. Now, the reason I came up with this economy paper is it's not about, you know, speed or anything like that. It, this is a block that you could actually rotary cut and piece. But for some reason, because it's always on the angles, they most of the time turn out wonky. So that's why I came up with the economy block, because it's one of my favorite traditional blocks. They used to, my grandma called it the economy block, um, or it's a square and a square, same thing. And, but it's a square and a square and a square, so it's three. But it just comes like this, and uh, the paper's nice and thin so that you can tear after sewing on it. And I just want to show you how you can do it scrappy and so that I can add this to my Sew Your Stash series as well because I think this really lends to it that you don't just have to so traditional blocks is a traditional way you can put foundation paper piecing within your sew your scrap method. So this is what the block looks like scrappy. Okay, I still have the papers on. And this is after I've sewn it and trimmed it up. And I use two of my scrap bins to make this block. And the size that I use are, I grab my three inch squares and that's for the center right here. Let me show you kind of what the cutting, this is what I've already cut and well, sort of cut, I'll show you what I do to get ready to um, sew one of these blocks so I can show you. So this three and a half inch square is for the center. So you need one three and a half inch square and then you need four five inch squares, okay? And this is where my five inch square bin comes in. Okay, now you could use, um, charm packs or five inch stackers for these if you want to, but since I put my leftover squares in bins, that's what I'm using. And then it's all scrappy. So let me move these out of the way. Let me just grab one five inch square so I can explain to you how I cut. Okay, so like I say, here's the three and a half inch square for the center and then you need two pieces and two pieces right here for the next round. I used the same fabric. And how I did that is I grabbed one five inch square and this five inch square. Those are the ones that I want for my side. And notice they're matching. So I can get two cuts out of this and I simply Put my ruler on here at two and a half, and this does not have to be exact. I'm just simply trying to get two pieces of fabric that match for strips out of this. So now I'm gonna go ahead and lay this back out on my board, meaning these opposite sides are gonna go like that. That's gonna be the second round. And then that leaves these two for the outside corners. So what I do with that, I mean, same thing, I just grabbed a five inch square, but I might as well just do this. And you can do it at the same time. What I do with these is cut these from corner to corner. So I just grab a ruler, again, no exact measurement, I just put it from point to point and go ahead and cut across that way. And now I know that those are gonna go on opposite corners when I'm sewing the block. So I'm gonna set these all together and I'm gonna show you how to sew those when I go to the machine. But first I wanna show you, talk about something else while I'm over here on the work table. And then I can show you this after I show you how to sew this one. So I have a new foundation paper out and it's called the Sparkle Star. 
and again it comes in six inch and 12 inch and so i designed these and it's so emma of course uh, produces them and distributes them and what this is is very very simple so this one is about ease and accuracy so that's what i was trying to say about the square and the square is not about you know speed or anything or a or a piece of paper that you need to have weird angles on because you could rotary cut that the economy block is all about accuracy but this one is about an angle that is hard to rotary cut without a specialty ruler you can see these strange angles here that you normally cannot do with just rotary cutting because you would have to have a template or a specialty ruler now in my grandma's day she would save her uh, cereal box cardboard to do her special templates and she would have to cut them out by hand each one of them and then either hand piece them or machine piece them together very painstakingly and it was kind of hard because they were on an angle and the bias would stretch so that's why i wanted to design this paper because it's on an angle so it can stretch during if you cut them individually and sew them together but because we are cutting squares and rectangles and sewing them first before we trim it up, all of that stretching when we're sewing together is taken care of because we have the special angle on the paper already and it's just so easy. And I know if my grandma was here, she would be so happy about these, uh, you know, papers that you can do um, special angles on without having to do them all individually. So I'm going to show you how I make those as well. And I'm sure that you saw on my countertop on my work area in the opening that you saw some of these sparkle stars sewn together. And I'll be showing that later. But this is what one block looks like. So I'm, you start out with a seven inch square and for the background. And then you just do the same thing with um, using the five inch squares, meaning I grab my my five inch bucket and for this what I do is I just take one five inch square and cut it in half like this and then that's one of these will work for each star point and so this is really fast as well so when we get over to the machine I'm going to talk about um, the economy block and sew one together and then finally I will sew one of these together and show you how quick that is. Okay, so enough chatting. Let's go over to the machine. Alrighty, so today I'm going to be sewing with Miss Dolly. Yes, she is a vintage featherweight. No, they do not come in yellow. I had this special painted from the featherweight shop. And um, one of these days I will do a video on all my featherweights and talk about them a little bit. But so she is what I'll be sewing on today. I do not have my, let's see, I normally have my seam so easy guide taped my machine to do easy corner triangles and quarter inch seam allowances. But guess what? On these blocks, all the lines that you sew on is taken care of that. So we don't need to worry about this, you know, unless you're sewing blocks together afterwards, then I would tape it back on, but we don't need that today. And um, again, these are the economy blocks that we're gonna be sewing. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is pull off a piece of paper. Okay, so I wanna let you know that I'm just using a regular size needle in my machine, which is an 8012. You know, you could go smaller if you wanted to, but I, I just use an 8012. I do adjust my stitch length to be small on the featherweight. It's kind of hard to say, you know, what it is, but I normally sew around a 12 when I'm piecing. So I just, you adjust the stitch length by going up and down. This is the reverse. But when you're coming down, you screw this so that when you, so it will stop on the stitch length. And so this looks like it's about, it's like between the 12 and the 20 here. But you just want to make it smaller because you want to perforate this paper and make it easy to tear off. So if you do a larger stitch length, it just may be harder to tear off. So what I do is is a uh, go step by step. So number one is the center square. So I want to get this center square here on the paper. 
But what you do is you don't put it on the sewing side because you need to see these lines to actually sew on. So what you're gonna do is put it on the back side with right side out. Always remember, it's gotta be right side out. So what I do is I will grab this little glue stick. I'll tell you about these little scraps of fabric in a minute. I grab this little glue stick here, and this is the kind I like to use. This is restickable glue stick. It's not permanent, it's restickable. And what I do is I just put it on the paper, like behind the number one, just a little bit like that. Make sure you put the lid back on so it doesn't dry out. And then I'll hold this up to the light. Cass, can you kind of follow me to the window? And I'll turn the paper around to the front side so I can see. Can you see that, those lines on there? Mm -hmm. That there's enough fabric that's going past all of those lines. And then I'll just bring it back over here. Make sure that's stuck there. And that's not going to go anywhere. And now I can start adding my foundation. Um fabrics to it and I don't have to worry about this coming off. You can pin in the center. I don't really like to pin. I don't want to tear my papers but I feel like that when you pin like this it kind of pulls up the paper and may distort it so I'd rather just use glue and you know you can peel the paper off of it and if there's any residue with this glue left at all it always stays on the paper which you discard anyway. It never stays on the fabric so that's my experience with it, and I'm pretty happy with it. Okay, so what I wanna do is step two. So I'm gonna add this little triangle right here, which is actually a rectangle. So I'm gonna grab one of these rectangles, and because I'm working on the back side, I'm gonna put right sides together like this with the same amount hanging over. And when you lift it up to the light, you can see that that's going past this line. So you don't have to worry about anything. And then I'm gonna start sewing just a little teeny bit past this line right here. I don't know if you can see that with my finger in the way, but here's the line I'm gonna sew on from here to here, but I'm gonna go like one stitch past both of those. So I'm gonna stitch on the line between one and two. So I just stick my needle down and just sew right on the line. And I'm going to end right there. And because I have to stop and start here, I'm not able to chain piece these blocks, but that's okay. Again, these blocks, these uh, economy blocks are not about speed, they're about accuracy. So now I can add the other yellow print the honeycomb onto the other side by doing the same thing. So I'm gonna line it up with the top of that. I'm gonna hold it up, make sure I'm going past my sewing line. It's all good to go. And when I say this is not about speed, these really don't take forever. It's just, you know, I'm used to chain piecing, so it's a little bit, you know, different to get used to. But um, once you get the rhythm down, these go pretty fast. Okay, so now I've got both sides of those. I'm gonna have a lot of threads to clip on these, but I like to clip them as I go so that I don't have a big mess. I'm gonna just throw them over to the side. <laughs> okay, so the next thing you wanna do is trim. So I'm gonna move this out of the way. And these are the two rulers that I use. Okay, these are called the add a quarter and they come in the six and a half inch length and wait that's six that's not six and a half that's six inches long and this is 12 inches long but they have a little ridge on them underneath here and i'll show you why and how i use those now i i will leave a link to these so that you can get these okay so what i do can you see this cast mm -hmm. is i turn when it's time to trim i turn it over to the paper side and I leave my, this is before pressing or anything. You want to trim these seam allowances off before you press. Um, what you're going to do is fold the paper even with here on the edges. So that's how you know. 
There's really not much to trim off of these because I lined them up, but if these went bigger than a quarter inch seam, what you're gonna do is take this with the lip on the underside like this, and it kind of lines up and butts up against that paper. Let me grab my, my uh, I guess I need one of these, okay. And then you're just gonna trim right along there, but I literally don't have anything to trim on these, but I just wanted to show you if you had something sticking up past a quarter of an inch, you would wanna trim those off. But because I don't on this two steps, I don't know, maybe I do on this side, I'll go ahead and fold it. Oh look, I do have more than a quarter inch, so I can show you how I do that. So again, the lip to this ruler is down there. See, and then I ended up trimming that off. So basically these rectangles are measuring two and a half by five because I took a five inch square and that's going to cover that completely for when we trim. So after you do opposite sides, you're gonna trim first with the paper side up by folding, and then you're gonna bring it over to the ironing board and you're gonna press away from the paper. I like to just run my iron over there just to kind of set the seams. And then I go ahead and just press these away. Sorry, I think I said away from the paper, but I meant away from the center square. So now you're just gonna press that and now it's time to add this one and this one. Let me put this bed back down and bring it over here. And so now I'm going to grab these two rectangles that I had cut previously, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to line it up here with the top of my blue and kind of center it the best that I can. Hold it up to the... Whoop got to turn it around first and then hold it up to the light make sure yeah I'm going past the line and then I'm just going to do these two sides So now I've got these four on for the second round, which are going to eventually be these when we trim. So what we're going to do is the outer corners. Let me get this thread back here. And let me show you something on the back of this paper. See how two of these corners go all the way along the outside? You can sew starting from the outside of the paper on both sides, but on, on this line you want to just do the same thing, it just barely sew over the line. And that matters in the pressing part, folding back and pressing. If you went all the way here, and all the way here, and all the way here, and all the way here, you wouldn't be able to fold back your other pieces. So just remember to automatically just do opposite sides. So I'll be doing six and seven, trimming and pressing back before you can add these other corners on. All right, so I'm just gonna grab, it doesn't matter any, any corner, it's gonna to touch all the same fabrics. And so I just lay that on here. And this one, I'm trying to follow this line right here. So see how, you can see how that kind of sticks out. And I'm gonna have enough sticking up from the top of this sewing line that I'm gonna be good to go. So, oh, now that I just told you, you need to do six and seven, I put it on the nine. Let me set that back up again. Okay, so now this is six and seven. This is actually step six, so I'm just gonna start right here and not all the way on the edge of the paper, even though it's an outside corner. All right, so this is what it looks like on the fabric side. This is what it looks like on my sewn side. And you can see that by using these five inch squares, I'm gonna have plenty that covers this paper. So I don't have to worry about that. And we are actually gonna end up trimming about a quarter of an inch off of this outside before we even sew them together. So even if you fold back a triangle and it shows like maybe 
you know, a little teeny bit of white paper like that, it's, it's going to be okay because remember, you're going to trim it. So at this point, I really do need to trim because I need to trim all, all of this excess off. So again, what you're going to do is always have it paper side up, and then I'm going to fold this right on my sewing line and crease it all the way across there. And I can use the smaller one. I always try to use the smaller one when I can just because it's less it's less to line up for me. It's easier in my hands. And then have that lip right up against that fold and trim that off. Okay, so now I've got a seam allowance, a quarter inch seam allowance that I've trimmed off perfectly. And now I'm just gonna do the other side. I really like these rulers. You can use a regular ruler, but this one is just nice to really go up against that fold on the paper. Alrighty, now I'm gonna go over to press these. Now again, I, I get a lot of you asking about my vintage irons. I do have a video on here on my channel where I talk about when I cover my ironing boards with my decorator weight fabric. And so I talk in that one all about my vintage irons, why I use vintage irons, where I buy them, what to look for. So you just need to go onto the home page here of my channel and click on my videos and you can see all of my videos all lined up and you can click on whichever one you wanna watch. Okay, so see those corners right there? I don't have to worry about these tails because they will be trimmed off when we square when we trim up the block. So now I've got my two remaining ones, my green for my five inch square that I cut apart. Same thing, I'm gonna bring it over here, make sure I see the light. Now I normally have this lamp right here turned on and so I don't really have to look into the window but when I film I don't have that lamp turned on because it shows a weird glare onto the camera. So. It's pretty easy for me. I just go like that and I can see it. So put the bed back down, slide this back over. It's another reason I love sewing on featherweights because they're just so easy to transport. I can lift it up and put it down here if I wanna cut. It's just, you know, normally other machines are so heavy you can't do that. It just has a beautiful stitch. Okay, so on this, you can start all the way off the edge of the paper. Just go ahead and sew that whole line. Now this is where I usually will use these little scraps of fabric. So I've talked about these before and people keep asking me why I'm using these scraps of fabric. I only use scraps of fabric for filming. Normally in between while I'm chain piecing, I will have a project going that I keep under here and I will actually like these are two and a half inch square. So I will sew them together and, you know, I call it my bonus quilting and I do when, when I start and I stop and I make several projects um, like pillows, runners, quilts by sewing this way. It's just a secondary bonus project that I'm making in between. I'm chain piecing other things and I have several videos here on how I do that and why, but I do like to, for filming, I don't want to, you know, worry about a secondary project because I don't like to get sidetracked. I want to concentrate on filming, and so I'll just use scraps of fabric to run in between my papers to save on thread, actually, and just save on time. It's just easier to, see, run them through the machine and then clip it off, and then I don't have all those thread threads to trim and waste that thread and uh, have lots of threads everywhere. So, see, I wouldn't have to be trimming all these off if I was using my starters and stoppers with everything. All right, so there's one. Sorry, I digress, but I wanted to, I get so many questions about that, so I just wanted to explain it again. Okay, so I'm gonna line that up. Sorry, Cass, I keep moving up and down. <laughs> Cassidy, my daughter Cassidy is here filming me and she always does the great camera work and I really appreciate that. Okay, 
then I can just go ahead with my fabric under there and start sewing. Now I love on these blocks that you sew directly onto the line because you know if you are sewing onto that line, that is what your pieces are gonna look like. And that's what I mean when I'm talking about accuracy. This is so awesome to be able to have this block this accurate when normally, because all of these rounds are on the bias, wow, is it hard to get this block accurate otherwise. Trim off my other one. I usually keep them like here or one under my machine. I like to have, you know, two so I can go on the beginning and the end. Okay, now again, I'm gonna have to fold this back and trim it. Let's not have an avalanche over there. Paper side up. Now this folds all the way from corner to corner. Got a nice seam there. I really like that this ruler helps because you don't slip either. Like if that didn't have a lip on it, it was just a regular ruler you might might slip off and cut into your piecing which would be really sad if i did that i would cry okay back over here this is the exciting part when you see it all unfold now at this point sometimes i will use the clapper these are clappers by riley blake and it helps to keep my blocks flat because they're made out of wood. The heat of the iron goes up into the wood and so your blocks cool off faster and because of the weight of them, they're not super heavy but there's some weight. It's really about absorbing the heat quickly and so your seams lie flat. And because I always use a good hot iron, this seems to work really, really nicely. You can get them in that size and this longer size as well. Okay, so look at that. It's almost looking perfect, but now it's time to trim off the outsides. And so it tells you right here, do not trim on this line. See how there's two outside lines? You don't want to trim on the inside line. That is a quarter inch from here to this one. That is your seam allowance from when you're sewing blocks together. What you want to do is trim off from the line on this very outside where it says trim on this line. So what I do with that is I can still just use the same ruler. All I need, there's no measuring involved. I just need to, of course, I will have the lip side up so that it lies flat. And all I need to do with that is just literally put it right on the line and trim across. And, you know, you can use, a, I usually have a small mat here that you can rotate but it's just it's pretty simple to rotate these I think I can I think I can handle just rotating this block and don't have to have a specialty mat for that because I'm not worrying about anything but just trimming this line okay yay let me put it here on this design board oh got some little crumbs on it okay look how cute that is See, I just, just love the accuracy of this economy block. So fun. So well, let's talk about the paper for just a minute. I like to leave my paper on until it is time to sew into the quilt because remember, these are all still on the bias, but this is perfectly trimmed up and square. And what I love about this, and this is what one of my ideas for this best friend's quilt along, to use these paper blocks when I was talking to Kimberly when I um, gave her the idea was, uh, you know, sometimes when you're sewing with a friend, like you're doing blocks, you're each doing blocks that are going to go in the same quilt, or you have a guild or clubs that you're all doing a raffle quilt and everybody has to do a block and you tell everybody like, oh, you know, do, a, do three 12 inch blocks or do, you know, two six inch blocks or whatever. And all the blocks are gorgeous and you get them all back and typically there's one or two people that are assigned to go to sew the quilt together. What happens literally every time 
even though everyone are awesome quilters, it's not about that, but you get the blocks back and they're like 12 and a quarter on one side and 12 and an eight. They're just not all the same size. And again, not because the quilters were bad, but because we all have our own way of quilting. We all maybe use an exact quarter inch or a scant quarter inch or someone used steam on their block after and shrunk it all up or they, you know, it's just, it's just, you know, this is handmade stuff when we're quilting blocks. And so when we're making them, they can't all be exact. And even though I make all the same blocks, maybe say I did 10 six and a half inch blocks, they're not all going to measure exactly the same. I'm going to try to do the best I can, but this is not about perfection. But it does make it hard when you go to sew a quilt together that is made from several makers. So back to what I was trying to say, by using these papers, no matter who sews these and trimming these up, they are all going to be the exact same size. And that is going to be so awesome when you go to do a project for a raffle for your guild or anything like that. And there are so many papers to choose from, um, from Fat Quarter Shop that it's so Emma does, these foundation papers. And I know they'll just keep doing more. And of course, I've got several in my brain coming as well. And this just adds a lot of possibilities. And again, it's not the only way to sew, but it sure does complement your quilt, you know, making. And they definitely have a place in quilting. And so I will keep these papers on until it's time when um, I'm ready to sew in. I'll simply just fold them back, crease them. Because I used a small stitch, I mean, so easy to tear off. And the paper's really, really nice and thin. Um, you can, you know, just tear them all off at the same time, you know, in front of the TV. Or you can do like Kimberly does and have her kids do it, <laughs> which is awesome. So... See, it's just, you just do it basically the same way you do as you sew them. You just go backwards and step and you just keep lifting these off when there's a seam right there. See, oh, it's easy to just pull that up. And that's what I do until all the paper's off. And that's the economy block. Now, um, I will insert a video here on what the blocks look like if you just go ahead and sew them together without any sashing. It forms another little pattern in the corner. And so I'll let you, I just did a short video real quick. So I'll be right back after you watch this. All right, so now I just put four of these out on the design board earlier because I wanted to show you what it would look like if you added sashings in between. So that would be really fun. So what, what I did with this is, this is uh, my denim circles V background, and I cut them one and a half by six and a half. And then these are just scrappy one and a half inch squares, you know, that I grabbed from my muffin tins that I keep my one and a half inch squares in for starters and stoppers and scrappy quilting. And I really like how that looks too. Now this would be a super cute pillow, super cute runner. I mean, just keep adding more and more blocks to it to make it into a big quilt, whatever you wanted to do. But I love to be able to use this economy block with my stash, you know, with my five inch squares. Now, also I wanted to tell you, with my five inch squares, when that bucket starts going low on maybe a certain color, or I've used a lot of five inch squares, then I'll just get my five inch strips um, basket out of the top shelf of the closet, and I'll just, um, you know, sit for an hour and cut a bunch of squares off those strips and replenish my five inch square baskets. And I do that with all of my sizes so that I just have those scrappy stash fabrics ready at my fingertips, whatever I want to make. And it was just fun knowing that I could take these uh, economy block papers and just pick which size was going to work the best and go for it. And using some of these fabrics from my stash that I've had for so long, and some of them are brand new, it's just really fun. And it's kind of just like uh, opening a present every time you pick up 
a scrap from your basket maybe that's been there from five years ago or something and you're like I remember this now the key to that is only having fabric that you love in your scrappy stash if it's fabric that you don't like and you're just trying to use it up then I would just give it to someone who could use it because you want to be able to use fabric that you really love and excites you every time you pick up that piece and so that's kind of my advice you know my little two cents on that and so now that I've showed you the economy block let's move on and let me get this cleaned up a little bit and I'll show you my sparkle star paper all right so let's do the sparkle star you guys, I'm really excited about this one because this is so simple, but I don't think it's, you know, too simple. No block is too simple when it really has a high impact like this one does. So you can see on the package out, you know, on the outside here is done with my prim fabric. And each of the background squares on this is a print. And then we just used a white solid for the points. And so that's what that looks like. But I really wanted to do it the opposite um, way to show you a different way and to kind of talk about the possibilities for this. And I mean, I can see this with all scrappy like denim blue or navy backgrounds with a white star. That would be so cute for 4th of July and put red, red and white stripes around for the border or something. Um, I mean, stars lend to so many things. They lend to 4th of July, you know, to Christmas, do this in autumn fabrics with a, a dark star, maybe, you know, black or a charcoal gray or something, or gold, bright gold stars with Civil War fabrics or something would look very autumn. That would be so fun. I just think there's a lot of possibilities for this. This is a great paper and so easy for beginners. So if you have... You know, one of your children or grandchildren want to learn to sew and just sew something. This would be perfect because you don't have to worry about quarter inch seam allowance. Or, you know, you can cut all these pieces for them and they can just literally actually sew on the line. And so that's really fun. So that's what we're going to be doing, the 6 inch. And again, they come in 12 inch as well. So here's my paper. I'm going to show you how I do two blocks for this so I've already got this one glued down so I cut my square my B background square the same size as the paper which is seven inch you could do it seven and a half inches whichever but what I do is again take my glue stick turn my paper over I can kind of see that uh, number one and I can see these numbers but what I want to do with these is I just I'm going to glue here on the corners so that I don't, my background square doesn't keep folding up on the corners. So I just lay it down here. I just kind of press it down here. And again, you want to see your printed side on the other side. So right sides out on both sides. And now remember, I showed you before that I simply take five inch squares and cut them in half. And one of these will be a point on one of the stars. So I'm just gonna put these up here and grab them randomly. That one's not quite dry, so I'm gonna use this one first. Okay, so I'm gonna grab, grab a strip, grab the paper, and I'm gonna do the same thing. Remember, right sides together here, right sides together, but this is the line that I'm going to sew on right here, so I want to make sure that I've got at least a quarter of an inch sticking up. Now, these are numbered stepwise, one, two, three, four, five. It literally doesn't matter which ones you do first. They are all the same angle, no matter how you turn them. They're all the same angle. So, and then again on these, I'm going to be able to chain piece these because I can start from one end of the edge of the paper and end on the other edge on all of them. It's not going to matter. It's not going to matter in the pressing or anything because they don't touch each other. So I'm just going to go ahead and start and do all of these lines, keep picking up pieces of fabric and do two at the same time just so that I can show you how I can chain piece. So now I've got 
opposite sides on both of them. Before you can uh, press these back, you need to trim them. So again, the same way as I've done the economy block. What you're gonna do is paper side up. Always paper side up and make sure everything's lying flat there. And just go like that. Grab your little ruler. And you know the drill by now, so I'm just gonna go ahead and trim them. All right, so now I'm just gonna trim these. Make sure that the ones that you've already pressed back are out flat, and the ones that you have not pressed back that you're just gonna trim are flat underneath. And then I literally just fold this back. And remember, I had these glued. That's how easy it is to just peel back this glue, but yet it still stays on and keeps it into place. And I don't feel any residue at all on this fabric, and I can just feel a little bit of sticky on this paper. And so, uh, that's why I love it. All right. So this is how these look before you trim them off. But th this paper is the exact same way as the other paper. This outside line is where you're gonna trim. So again, I just grab my ruler. I'm going to trim these up. Okay. You guys, look at those. I'm so excited. They're so simple. Just those, those angles. This block is all about the angles, and I love how this turns. And so when you sew them together... They just, these don't touch. They look like they would touch, but by, when you do the quarter inch seam, let me see, let me grab this piece. I'll show this in the opening and then I'll insert a little video where you can see this up closer together too. So when I sew these blocks together, I like to press my seams open. It just is less bulk. You don't have to do that. But the reason I like to is because then I can turn them any way I want to according to, you know, how I want the star to look. But aren't these fun? I love all the different bee backgrounds. And I love just the star points being different colors. Now, this measures, because these are six-inch blocks... This measures 24 inches. Kimberly is in the process of making a quilt just like this with the 12 inch papers. And that measures 48 inches. If you did six, I think she did her six by six setting. So six blocks across, six blocks down. And so six by tw six times 12, that's 60 inches. So that is a, you know, 60 inch square. That's perfect for a crib quilt or something. Table toppers so fast to make these and really have a big impact and when I say fast like you saw how fast it was even though the video was sped up obviously that wasn't real time but real time don't you wish you could sew all quilt blocks this fast and um again the possibilities are awesome like this would be so fun with one of my shabby dark backgrounds with bright colors and there's just so many different things that you can do with this paper I'm super excited about it and you know who doesn't like a sparkle star so I hope I've inspired you to use, you know, foundation paper just a little bit, even if it's not your favorite thing or you've never done it before. I think you'll find they're a little bit addicting and they definitely have their place when you want accuracy for certain things, for certain blocks, 
or when you want super fun angles when normally it would be hard to rotary cut. So hope you enjoyed this uh, Sew Your Stash series. Hope you are enjoying using your stash and enjoying my videos. If you are, follow my channel, please, so that you can see all of my new tutorials coming. And please like this video, and we will chat with you later.